Mars is arguably the most well-known planet in the solar system after Earth. For many centuries, we've pondered what secrets it may conceal. Consequently, it continues to be a key focus for cutting-edge scientific research. However, many people believe that Mars would be our next stop when humans successfully colonized the moon in the late 1960s and that hasn't actually happened either. The question, then, is why? Welcome to Z. Today, we'll look more closely at the reasons NASA hasn't visited Mars yet. Do you require answers to the important queries? So why not join Z to see more videos like this one and ring the bell for more inspiring material? Perhaps we should first think about why we went to the moon in order to comprehend why we haven't visited Mars. Because it can be claimed that there weren't a great deal of reasons for the Apollo manned flights, despite the enormous cultural significance and success of them. Undoubtedly, the lunar landings provided an amazing and rare chance for research, but ultimately, the space race between the Soviet Union and the United States was what pushed us there. The rationale behind the moon landings was heavily influenced by politics, diplomacy, and massive competition. The Apollo missions were a demonstration of technological dominance and advancement to the extent that visiting the moon might not have taken place either if the Cold War hadn't broken out. History demonstrates that the Soviets didn't actually make it there because they withdrew soon after they were defeated. And it's not like America has hurriedly turned back in the years following Apollo. Practically speaking, it makes little sense to invest billions to walk on the moon, and perhaps it is the main issue that has hampered any attempted Mars mission. Being the goal of the space race at the time, reaching the moon had a very clear purpose, but reaching Mars, up to this moment, just hasn't really had the same. But it's becoming more and more clear that interest in the 21st century is rising. To send humans on Mars by 2033, NASA is apparently under formal pressure from the White House and does now have some ad hoc preparations in place. But there's also the possibility of a new space race. Both the Chinese National Space Administration, CNSA, and the European Space Agency, ESA, but with less specific timetables, intend to send people to Mars. For instance, ESA merely has an unstated long-term objective, and it is rumored that China hopes to accomplish it between the years 2040 and 2060. The Mars desire has infamously extended among private businesses as well. Some people wager that the private companies will outdo the space authorities. For instance, it has been said that SpaceX is interested in both delivering people to Mars and building a permanent habitation there. It will be the first time that humanity has tried to populate another planet if preparations go as planned. Although the initial launch target was set for the middle of 2020, the missions have now been postponed until the late 2020s or early 2030s. But even so, it begs the issue of why it hasn't happened already since so many organizations seem to be advocating for the same thing. Why hasn't NASA itself progressed to the same level as it did with the moon in the 1960s when a new space race is fueling people's imaginations? Why aren't we getting ready for takeoff? Once more, the political climate might be important. Managing the nearly continual political shift in America is perhaps one of NASA's biggest difficulties. Of course, NASA reports to the government, it receives financing from the government, and to some extent, its public perception is influenced by the current administration. The fact that NASA has had 13 different presidents since its founding in 1958, as of 2022, may be indicative. Moreover, financing has never been consistent, and in more recent years, it has frequently decreased, with the exception of the period leading up to the 1960s moon landings. Because of America's bipartisan history, the two branches of the U.S. government frequently have divergent objectives. It may imply that what one president orders for NASA, the following one cancels. For instance, over the course of the 20-year period between 2001 and 2021, the goals set by Presidents George W. Bush, Barack Obama, and Donald Trump have all been different. 
while Joe Biden shifted his position once more after taking office. Due to the cutting and changing, NASA has had to continuously respond to the new constraints it must work under. In some cases, this has required recycling components from previous, now canceled, missions to use in future ones. On the one hand, having a constant stream of fresh ideas to propel the agency forward can be seen as a huge plus because it makes sure that no one group has too much power. On the other hand, perhaps it prevents NASA from devoting too much time to any one project. To this purpose, the financial mechanism has also received numerous criticisms. Funding was at an all-time high during the first space race, and NASA quickly reached unprecedented heights by focusing on achieving one stable goal, landing on the moon. But it can be argued that focusing only on the moon, or Mars, is no longer sufficient, forcing NASA to allocate its fluctuating budget among numerous projects that, according to history, may never even be completed. The CEO of space travel company Zero Gravity Operations, Peter Diamandis, stated in an interview with Business Insider in 2018 that the agency is unable to sustain constant funding to achieve anything. But in all honesty, politics shouldn't be considered the primary factor keeping us from visiting Mars just yet. Additionally, there are many technological difficulties. Simply said, traveling to Mars is difficult. The sheer distance between here and there comes first. The moon is the furthest point in space that humans have ever traveled, but Mars is around 200 times farther away. We're talking months aboard a ship to go there, plus waiting for ideal launch windows, which only occur around every 26 months and are when Mars and Earth are closest to one another. At distances from Earth to Mars, fuel type also poses a significant problem. It is possible to travel with conventional gasoline, but it would be extremely difficult and impractical to do so. To make a starship faster and lighter in the interim, NASA and others are investing in alternative technologies like nuclear fission engines. With all the on-Mars technology, including spacesuits, habitats, and communications, we are really only just getting started all of which are necessary for any planned mission and could have been improved years ago if it had been given priority. But once more, until private enterprises joined the picture in recent years, there didn't seem to be an obvious demand. The care of astronauts is, however, likely NASA's top priority at this time. Since there is more time for things to go wrong, the farther there is to travel, and even a minor issue might have disastrous consequences out in space. It is important to consider the physical impacts of radiation, shifting gravity, and losing night and day on the body over time. Additionally, in addition to providing for the astronauts' bodily needs, NASA, as well as any Mars mission runner, must also take into account the unparalleled psychological toll. Rarely have humans been able to stay in space for longer than a year up until now, but those instances have always taken place on our relatively close to Earth space stations. In comparison, a round trip to Mars takes several years, during which time you are literally millions of kilometers from your home. For the select few who participated in the Apollo program, traveling to the moon was no easy task, but reaching Mars will demand a totally different level of dedication. Because there is no going back once the rocket takes off, the selection procedure for astronauts is also drawn out. There have been a number of long-term isolation studies conducted so far, but none have come close to a real trip to Mars. In reality, any vision of the future on Mars must still take into account how to effectively manage mental stress. With Mars, researchers, technologists, engineers, psychologists, and a whole host of other professionals must traverse a very, very large list of unknowns. These might thus be regarded as sufficient justifications on their own for why we haven't started yet. Over all of that, however, there is also the dynamic political and social environment, which is particularly important for NASA. As a public organization, NASA's goals are subject to annual and regional government change. Its budget is subject to change. Additionally, the public's perception of NASA's value may evolve over time. 
whether the oncoming new space race will generate sufficient motivation and need to finally transport us to another planet and transform us into an interplanetary species remains to be seen. However, that is the actual reason NASA hasn't visited Mars as of yet. How do you feel? Do you think we missed anything? Check out more Z videos, share your thoughts in the comments, and subscribe to receive notifications of our newest posts.